Today we have a story of crazy entitled parents walking into a venue and just expecting the staff to watch their kids. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, entitled parent thinks I owe her my seat because didn't book a ticket for her child. This was a couple years ago, but I can't get it out of my head, so I thought I'd share here. Okay, to start with the story, my family lived across the country back then, so I would usually buy a flight to get there. Well, this was during the holidays, so everything was backed up, and there was a lot of storms. So when I got to my first layover, my flight was cancelled and they couldn't get in their system to get me a hotel, so I slept on the airport floor that night, clutching all my bags. By the time I got onto the plane, I had spent 24 hours in the airport. Luckily for this flight, I had booked first class. So I get on the plane and get comfy and I'm just so happy that I'll be home soon after the last couple days I had, when a really nice flight attendant comes over and points at the empty seat next to me and mine, and tells me a mother forgot to book her toddler a ticket and she was wondering if they could take my seat, and the empty seat next to me. I told them that I'm sorry, but I've had a really long day and I paid extra for this, I would like to stay. The flight attendant was very nice and said no problem, but she let the woman come sit in the empty seat next to me with her toddler on her lap. She immediately looks at me with a scowl and says, I can't believe you wouldn't trade your seat for a kid. And I simply tell her, ma'am, I paid extra for this seat. You should have booked him a ticket, this isn't my fault. Then she keeps going off saying things under her breath and to her toddler like I can't hear her. And then she tells her kid to make the most noise you can, he can do whatever he wants. And she keeps saying things to me and I can't believe this entitled woman. I finally lash out and said, will you shut the freak up? I'm not proud of myself for this but with the last couple of days I had, I didn't care anymore. But my common sense came back and I apologized for swearing in front of her kid, even though I heard her call me a bench and many other words. Again, the woman wouldn't shut up, and finally my savior came. That really nice flight attendant came over and bent down to the woman's level and said, Ma'am, you were lucky to be able to switch seats, and all I've heard from you since you switched is you threatening this woman and telling your child to be noisy. This plane hasn't left yet, and we have no problem kicking you off this flight, and if you continue to do this while we're in the air, you will be banned. I couldn't help but smile. She finally shut up, and I was so glad that I downloaded Sex Life on Netflix so I could finish my steamy show right in front of her. Edit, for people asking, I'm assuming the child was under the age of two, just a big baby? If your child is under two, you can fly with them on your lap instead of buying them a seat ticket. I'm assuming this is what the woman did and she was hoping to get an extra seat. I hope that clears up some things, sorry. Edit 2, for those asking, I'm guessing most people on the plane came from a cancelled flight as well. The plane was smaller than the last plane I was originally supposed to go on. I don't know if that was the reason she needed a seat for her kid or not. I don't know why they didn't just switch the grandma to first class, but I'm guessing the flight attendant asked if one of them wanted to switch, and the mom was the one who took the opportunity. Again, I don't know if this was the thought process, but it makes the most sense to me. If I were in that position, I would be feeling like I'm in a position of, you can't win. On one hand, this is a seat you specifically paid extra for and you've been suffering so you want that experience. But there is some like small voice in the back of my mind that would be like, well it would make things nicer for this mom. But that definitely goes away pretty quickly when you see how ungrateful and awful this person is. My Iron Throwaway wrote, they should have bumped whoever else was in the row with the mom up to first class next to you and given that kid the seat. Such an odd decision to try to have you move down. Who's going to leave an expensive seat for something crappier? OP responded saying, Exactly what I thought. I don't know what was going on. It was a smaller plane, so there was only two seats per aisle, but still agree with you. Definitely couldn't switch back there. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy crazy stories of entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, My daughter's entitled father is finally leaving us alone. Hey Reddit, this came up far earlier than planned, and while I'm happy to announce my daughter and I are finally free, there are some sad news mixed in. Just to recap, I, 34 year old female now, have a daughter, 6 year old female, with Jeff, 37 year old male. We never dated, it was a one night stand where protection failed. I never regret having my daughter despite Jeff demanding me to end the pregnancy, then refusing to be involved for my daughter's first 4 years of life. Two years ago, he reappeared demanding parental rights. Our country's courts deny it since he was not in her birth certificate, his decision, and he's never paid any kind of child support. 
Turned out he didn't care for my daughter. All he wanted was to use her as a replacement for a child he lost with his wife. Now, before I go to the update, I did get a lot of questions to answer. Did I know Jeff was married? He wasn't when we had our one night stand. Are you interested in Jeff? No, I'm aromantic. Meaning, I do not develop romantic feelings. I don't think that's a healthy mindset for a long-term partner, so I refuse to date. I was okay with one night stands until I had my daughter. Why did you send information to Jeff? Because my mother recommended it and she was absolutely right. Had I not done so, he could have sued me for parental alienation. By trying to get him involved, I actually came out far better situated to prove I'm not trying to keep him away out of spite, but because I truly think he's a danger. Why don't you talk more about your daughter's emotions or status? Um, no? No offense, but I give just enough information on my six-year-old. I don't think people in Reddit are bad, but this is the internet. I don't really need to speak in-depth details on my child's mental state or her actions. What I want to share about myself, that's fine. I'm a full-grown woman. My child is another matter. I don't even post pictures of her in social media. All you need to know for the people asking is she's happy, healthy, and has a father figure in her godfather. She's a normal, rambunctious little girl. Why was Jeff arrested? He got into a drunk fight. Assault charges. It's completely unrelated to my kid, but could have been used for custody matters. Ended up being unnecessary. Now to the update. While our case has yet to be reviewed, we were scheduled for September 2025. Jeff's lawyer contacted mine to say they were dropping their demand for parental rights. About six weeks ago, Jeff formally agreed to drop any claims for rights or responsibility to my daughter. I know a lot of people are going to go all over, but what about child support or inheritance? Keep reading. It should explain why it's not worth it. My lawyer went over the documents to make sure it wasn't a legal trap of sort, and he confirmed they were exactly that. He wasn't asking for anything in return, just to drop. I didn't question more, just had it signed and now we need to wait a couple of weeks to get confirmation everything is done. Since both parties agree on this, it should be relatively quick to get it through the courts. If it sounds weird that he suddenly just gave up, I thought the same. To be sincere, I was half tempted to snoop around but I was way too busy making arrangements. As some people suggested, I will be moving. I won't leave the country I live in, but I plan to move closer to my support system, my daughter's godparents. Turns out there's a property less than 5 minutes away from them on sale. There's no home built yet, so I have a lot to do, but that's my intended new home. We also got not one, not two, three dogs. The cat is probably planning my murder, so with all of these changes I have to admit, I didn't have time to snoop. The thing is, the whole thing came to me rather than me need to look. I met with Jeff's in-laws. It was pure coincidence. I was waiting on some things in a store and they were there. I had met them in passing in that mess of a Christmas party last year, but this is really the first time we talked. My daughter was thankfully at school since the topic was heavy. They recognized me and asked if I could speak to them. I wasn't sure, but I decided to be polite and offered to buy them a coffee. They were very nice. Not entitled at all. They explained they were sorry for their daughter's behavior. She'd not been the same since she lost her child. Those who called out she was using her dead baby's name on my daughter were right, and they just wanted to clear the air with me. I told them I didn't personally blame them, but I couldn't forgive their daughter and she was a big worry. That's when things hit the fan. The mother started crying and the father explained Jeff's wife passed away, self-inflicted. I feel like crap for the things I told them. I apologized, but they were very gracious and told me they knew I had no idea. We talked a little about her, about their grandchild. I found out what Jeff told me about how his child died was a lie, and now I don't feel so bad as to keep it wrapped up. He shook an infant because she was colic. If you don't know what that is, it's when babies just cry nonstop. I was angry. I'm still angry. No one should ever shake a baby to the point they pass away. That's just diabolical in my opinion. He had told me she just passed away from sudden infant mortality. It's a common thing here, unfortunately. They talked about Jeff and how he had sworn up and down I would agree with his idea to have my daughter pass for their lost grandchild. And that would help their daughter. They were not really thinking straight and I get it. Jeff is a charmer and mix that with grief, it goes nowhere well. There were other things said, but the main thing was that they didn't want any resentment on my part to their family or their daughter. I told them I don't hate them or their daughter and how sorry I was that they had to go through all of this. 
They gave me a picture of my daughter's half-sister. She was a very cute baby, and I plan to one day explain things to my daughter. I think it's important she knows. I also know where Jeff's wife and her baby are buried. I think not yet, but when things aren't as raw as they are right now, I'll take my daughter to visit her sister. I called my lawyer after to give him these new details. He did reprimand me for speaking to the in-laws alone, but he understood the situation. My lawyer is a good friend of mine and he tends to be very blunt when I make mistakes. He promised me he's making sure that whatever ties could exist between Jeff and my daughter are fully cut legally. More things have come to light too. People were right. Jeff was pretty much lying to everyone trying to paint himself as this saintly father that couldn't possibly be part of his one surviving daughter's life. A lot of people immediately judge single mothers here as homewreckers or prostitutes, so I had a few bad encounters with people throwing insults and threats my way. Another thing that came up which was relatively recent, this was about two weeks before he gave up, Jeff began telling people he offered to marry me but I refused him that I was always after his money. Thankfully, that one lie didn't go far with most people that know both of us since I've made it very clear throughout my life that I'm never getting married. And I don't need his money. I got into a high-income job to care for my mom. And now, my daughter. I don't really care for excessive luxury. His wife passed away not long before we sent the agreement. He didn't want anything to do with my daughter. It does explain why Jeff gave up. I still think he's the most horrible human being that exists an entitled murderous idiot, he felt entitled to my daughter, he failed his wife and killed an innocent baby. And I know he knows I'm posting this on Reddit, so if you read this Jeff, I hope if karma is real it gives you everything you deserve. I want to say more but I don't want to break Reddit's rules. But yeah, here's the good news mixed with terrible news. I might update this post if anything else happens, but I want to believe this is over. I just want to close this chapter and look into a new start. Small disclaimer. I don't know how he got away with killing his child. I have no access to police records or investigation. I'm not part of law enforcement or involved with any judicial entity. For people asking me for more information on it, I'm really sorry, but I can't give you a full legal case. I personally don't know how some people in Reddit get access to police records that easily, because I certainly don't have access to them. All the info I have is what I'm told by others, chisme, or what my lawyer can find. I'm just taking a stab at it, but I'm assuming the way he got away with doing that to that innocent kid is exactly the way they described it. It was passed off as some sudden infant mortality. It was basically a cover-up, right? Mysterious Panda 829 wrote, First of all, I'm glad you're free. I'm guessing this is why Jeff was arrested? Shouldn't he be in jail, though? In many countries, shaking a baby in itself is a jail time. I also think you should get a permanent restraining order for your family since he directly caused the death of his child and indirectly his wife. Realistically, he could meet another woman and try for your daughter again. This guy is either a narcissist or a flat out sociopath. The fact that he immediately dropped pursuit of your daughter after his wife was gone proves it. She was just a tool to keep control. But seriously, he needs to rot in jail. OP responded, Actually, I forgot on that and will update the post. He got arrested for assault. He got into a drunk fight, completely unrelated to anything with my daughter. The agreement we signed basically means he'll never have a legal tie to my daughter. It's a no contest agreement that he's giving up all parental and visitation rights. Our next story is, My mom gets upset about the littlest things and is a hypocrite when it comes to littlest things. I, 22 year old male, am in the autism spectrum and I have ADHD and I can't really learn some basic skills like gardening with a hoe or digging a flower bed in a certain way to get the weeds out and my mom, 54 year old female, has been informed quite well. I am still able to take care of myself quite well and I can live alone. Those that I listed for skills are the biggest things my mom doesn't get that I can't do them. Then she gets angry and tells me I can't function in society without her once she eventually passes away. Then there's other things that upset me, like when I'm in my room doing my things, I get a little messy, but not to the point where it's horrible, and she yells that I live like a pig when I barely do anything. And at night when I'm supposed to be sleeping, I do stay up and try to be quiet, but when I do go to sleep, mom's on her phone laying in bed for no reason and she's the one who really needs to sleep the most out of my family due to her health problems. And when she catches me still up at night, she gets absolutely furious for it as if she doesn't do the same. 
And again, she starts a whole monologue about how important motherhood is and that I won't survive without her, when that has nothing to do with anything. Also, when it comes to my hair and beard, she absolutely despises my long hair and beard when, where I live, they're considered to be a sign of good looks. I live in Finland, and my mom is from Thailand, so I get that family is a big aspect of pride and all, but it's not the end of the world if I don't live with her till she dies. And also, she wants me to grow up independent, so I don't know which one she wants me to do. I definitely feel like she's doing OP a major disservice probably throughout the entire course of OP's life. I mean, the way that they're just constantly putting OP down saying, you can't do this, it's impossible for you to do X, you're going to suffer without me. Chances are any kid with a disability that needs to work through things that is being constantly told, why can't you do this or you can't do this, are probably not going to reach a level of success past what's described. There was a great PSA about Down syndrome I saw recently where the message is, assume that I can. It's all about how through their everyday life, with even mundane decisions and things that come up, people create these assumptions that somebody with Down syndrome can't do these things. Therefore, they get treated like they can't do these things. And ultimately, being treated that way, they end up not being able to do these things that they might have been able to do. Blue Eyes Forever wrote, I'm sure there are millions of people who go through life without gardening. It's a hobby. You don't need to do it for survival anymore. I do not know any men who enjoyed gardening at the age of 22 anyway. It's usually a hobby you start enjoying as you mature. Do not worry about that at all. Also, do not worry about the beard and long hair. You should do what makes you feel good. Her personal opinion is really irrelevant. It sounds like your mother's not treating you as an adult and is overprotective and critical. I would consider moving out if I were you. It would probably be better for your mental health. This next story is, Mom seeks live-in nanny for 36 cents an hour. Is this for real? A family in Flagstaff, Arizona is looking for a live-in nanny to care for their two children, ages 3 and 5, for 55 hours per week. The job offers a salary of $600 per month, which breaks down to about 36 cents an hour. Responsibilities include transporting the children, preparing meals, and maintaining the home's cleanliness. The position includes accommodation from Sunday evening to Thursday evening. Requirements include a valid driver's license, reliable vehicle, clean background check, and CPR and first aid certification. This offer raises questions about fair compensation and realistic job expectations. What are your thoughts? Good luck finding anybody that's going to be willing to get $600 a month for a 55 hour per week work week. Yeah, right. Even $600 per week wouldn't be enough to do that job. Many Studio 3393 wrote, and to not be offering full time accommodations? What do they expect someone to do? Have a house or apartment to only use Friday and Saturday? Our next story is, we're gonna live on a bus. You can just host Thanksgiving at 23. Oops, now we're homeless? This happened a few years back. I found out my parents bought a bus to live on, an old school bus. This is a normal thing for a retiree couple to do, a big life change to move on from being parents, except they weren't empty nesters. They have great jobs and could afford to put the bus together. All four of their kids were in their early 20s, and I was the eldest just below my mid-20s. All my siblings were still in college or still living with them. They wanted to keep two 100-pound dogs and their high school senior-aged son on a bus. I am panicking because what if something goes wrong and one of the kids has to move back home without a home? My husband and I purchased a pull-out couch for emergencies because of this. I very patiently ask, okay, so how do you want to handle holidays? Well, you kids can just host it. You have your own place. My own place is a one bedroom, one bathroom where we don't even own a table for eating. We have tables for miniature painting, but no chairs that could be used for dinner. When we host friends, we use the coffee table and put food there. Our kitchen is much too small to feed a family of six. One wall of our living room has large pet rat cages. I'm a small scale pet rat breeder, so I know my mom would freak out about the pet smell. We keep them clean, but the smell of pets in a house that has a dog, let alone a dog, a cat, a lizard, and two mischiefs of rats, I flat out refused to host and they got hand wavy about it. They did not re-up their lease and ended up homeless for a few months, living in a hotel with my high school senior brother and two giant dogs because the bus was not up and ready. It's been years and it's still not ready. 
This was a part of a breaking point where I went low contact. There were other factors, but that was a cherry on top of fun neglect, abuse, medical and psych, not CPS level, but just under, by phobia and racism sandwich. Now, I completely understand the mindset of downsizing. I had relatives who had this gorgeous, multi-story, big, sprawling house with a beautiful backyard giant pool. It was almost devastating to watch from a distance as all their kids got older and moved out and they immediately downsized into some, you know, pretty average size house. No more super awesome pool parties. But really, there's got to be some level of realism to it. I'm not saying the RV or bus idea couldn't work out, but they've got to have an actual plan. Surf Ninja wrote, This is happening to a lot of retirees. They're watching a lot of YouTubers selling them on the RV or bus retirement, and almost none of them have any clue what they're actually getting into. From what I've read, most of them don't make it to a year before they regret selling their house. And once they get to the age where they need regular medical visits, it becomes a nightmare. OP responded saying, exactly my mindset. Though my parents fancy themselves as flippers, so they hadn't lived in a house for more than four years before selling and moving. I lived in 20 different houses by 21, three countries and two states. Our next story is, Mother Hogs My E-Scooter. So that title sounds extreme, but I didn't know any other way to put it. This is actually about my mother, so I'm not sure how well received this is going to be but I wanted to share the situation and maybe get opinions on how I should navigate this because it really ruined my morning today. Situation, a few weeks ago, my mother asked me, 21, if she could use the e-scooter I bought in 2020 to get to work. I only use it whenever I go to the barber or when I go get some breakfast since I work from home. I said, sure, I don't see a problem with it. Even helped her set up the app. Now, she drives the scooter like four out of five times a week and only uses the car when she has to buy groceries. Fair enough. Now to today, I woke up and thought I might go for a haircut today. I really like going before lunch because everything is empty at that time. So I go up to her at about 9am and say, Hey, I'm gonna need the scooter today since I want to go to the barber. She said, Can't you just go later today? I say, I prefer going in the morning since it's more empty. She said, yeah, okay, and said jerk after while walking off. I said, come on, this isn't fair. Why do I get to be the jerk for letting you save petrol driving my scooter? She said, yeah, yeah, be quiet. So here I am, really annoyed that I'm thinking about this right after waking up. It drives me mad. Note, sorry if this really isn't the right subreddit for this, but it sounded kind of matching. I understand that this is usually for public situations. I'm kind of curious about OP's greater relationship with their own parent considering the exchanges here. I mean, the mom sounds kind of childish and like, is OP providing any kind of reason for that? Why is the mom the one going, yeah, yeah, whatever, okay, jerk, walking off like they're some moody teenager? Bittergreen49 wrote, do you help around the house, cooking, cleaning, dishes, etc.? Is there any way your mother could feel that your only contribution other than rent is the scooter? OP responded saying, Hmm, I haven't thought about it that way. She does all of that. I thought rent would overwrite that feeling. Our next story is, We were expecting you to watch Our Kid. Three-year-old birthday party held recently. Kid-themed venue, but not the kind of place that has staff or set up for kids to be dropped off. Invited many of the kids from our little one's daycare, so it's a first time meeting most of the parents. The following exchange happens and still bewilders me when I think about it. In walks entitled parents alongside others arriving, goes like this. The entitled parents say, where can we put his bag in case you need anything? Me, confused by the question, replied, feel free to keep it at any table you choose to sit. They reply, oh, we're just dropping off our little one. We'll be back to pick him up after the party's done. Two hours. I explain we cannot support watching their child and hosting said party. Nobody can be responsible for doing so. They'll need to stay. The entitled parents replied, He's super simple to watch and you won't have a problem at all. Just call us if there is one. Their kid is a three-year-old as well. I said, That will not be happening. Once again, we're busy hosting and watching our kid. You need to stay with your child. The entitled parents reply, Well, I guess he and the gift we brought will not be able to stay because we have shopping to do. I tell them, Thank you for stopping by. They blankly stared at me, shocked their threat did not work. Of course, their kid had a tantrum having to leave so fast, so they stayed for the first half of the party. Still walked out with their gift though. 
Oh darn, one less random Amazon kids toy. Who in their right mind thinks that it's okay to drop off a three-year-old with people they've never met before, other than a daycare? Clearly, because both of your kids go to the same daycare, you must be just equally as good as the daycare workers themselves, you must be practically an extension of them. It actually blows my mind that they thought they could just drop their three-year-old kid off at a party and just go off doing other stuff for two hours. You're just gonna leave your kid like that in 2024? Nikki Vicious wrote, I remember at a party, maybe my 11th or 12th at the local park, We'd rented out the pavilions, had music and one of those inflatable bounce things that had a water slide on it too. I was helping my parents set up, and this little girl, still in diapers but old enough to walk, grabs my hand. I just assumed she was one of my cousins that was there early. I'm half Mexican, my family is massive, no I can't identify all of my cousins. I can't even remember which cousin goes with which aunt or uncle for about half the ones I can name. I ended up carrying this kid around for like 20 minutes before my mom asked who she was. Like, I don't know, I thought she knew. We were there for 4 plus hours. We had already started taking things back down when the little girl's mom strolls back up and tells her it's time to go. My mom was ticked. She didn't know any of us, no one in my family knew her. She just thought it would be a good idea to send her toddler to a party she wasn't invited to because it looked fun. And she didn't stick around to watch her because she saw my mom and aunts. The woman called me a stuck-up brat for not wanting her kid there. I was the birthday kid. I gave up my little goodie bag because I felt bad that the little girl didn't have one. I started crying, which set the little girl off, which ticked off everyone. It was just so wild that she legitimately thought she did nothing wrong by dropping off a little girl at a party where she didn't know anyone. The freaked up part is if she would have talked to my mom or one of my aunts, They absolutely would have watched her to give the mom a break. People in the 80s or 90s were insane. I'm still somewhat shocked by the fact I survived growing up in those decades without any major lasting injuries. Our next story is, Entitled Mom says washing hands is a waste of time. My side hustle on the weekends or my days off is babysitting, and an entitled parent just left me a negative review on the app she hired me from because I wash my hands too much? Apparently, it's weird and a waste of time that I asked to wash my hands when I arrived after changing her four months old diapers and before preparing his bottle. She's probably just trying to scam the app out of what she paid for me to watch her son, but if not, then I feel bad for that kid. Well, I'll tell you one thing, either that kid's going to be very sick or is going to have just about one of the best immune systems around. No Proposal 7628 wrote, Of course you're supposed to wash your hands after handling a dirty diaper. That's basic good child care, especially when the next thing you were doing was fixing the bottle. She's going to have a very ill baby at some point with that attitude. If her review said negative things about you washing your hands after changing the diaper, no good mom would believe a word of her review. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.